Hi everyone, I'm Stan from Eagle Vision here again with James Polishek. James, welcome. And we're talking about buying land in South Australia. So last time we talked about the where. In this episode, we want to talk about the how. So some of the specifics on what are the local dynamics like and so forth. So let's start with the government. The government has been very proactive in helping fix the housing crisis, as they call it in the media. How are they actually doing it? Uh, so the shortest version is via land releases. Right. So um, the government controls a fair bit of land uh, to the south of Adelaide, but also to the north. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, they also control a rezoning process uh, yep. for any land that is not currently residential. Sure. Um, the most recent releases, which I think I've referred to in a previous uh, episode, um, a, a thousand homes across the, the north, south and central regions in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. um, there are more to come specifically to the south of Adelaide. Yep. Um, but that is the biggest way that the government's contributing for sure. Yeah, I heard a number of 25,000 lots or something like that, but obviously stretched out over a longer period of time. Uh, yeah, yeah, a big hairy audacious goal for the government, I think. Um, and and certainly they need to have it because um, housing is, is, is in short supply, so we need more. Um, mm. And I think the, uh, the government is also working with the building industry to try to bring more homes to market uh, as quickly as possible. There are various challenges with that, of course, um, but uh, certainly so far, so good and, and been very proactive. Yeah, sure. So can interstate developers time the market in any kind of way? Um, I, th I think um, timing the market is a is an interesting concept. Mm. Uh, I think for uh, any developer, be it local or interstate, um, if you're going to try to purchase government land, um, there's going to be a tender process involved or uh, multi-stage tender processes involved. Um, so you certainly need to have your finger on the pulse and understand when those are coming and how to get involved. Um, I think uh, you need to have a presence in South Australia, not necessarily by virtue of previous projects, um, but you need to be here so that you are seen. Yeah. Um, the state government doesn't automatically rule out interstate developers, uh, not by any stretch. Mm. Uh, however, they do want to know that you are committed to uh, the similar things that they are committed to. And yeah. it's very difficult to do that if you are uh, doing it from afar. Yeah, of course. And maybe if you want to talk about then the relationships and the nature of the vendors here. Uh, yeah, so, um, I mean, vendors and government are not that dissimilar. Right. Um, we are generally a reasonably conservative state. Yeah. Um, if, if I stay on uh, government tenders ever so briefly, um, quite often what we'll see is that for an interstate developer coming into South Australia, they might tender on, on a single project and miss out. Mm -hmm. um, but that point forward, they are in front of the government. So um, they are contacted about future tenders. Um, if, if that particular developer is persistent about their seeking out for land, uh, the government treats that more seriously. Um, that concept exists for private vendors as well. Uh, so Adelaide, South Australia has historically and truthfully been a reasonably conservative state. Mm -hmm. A lot of our landowners are long-term landowners, be it uh, by our farming land that's been in a family for many, many years, yeah. uh, or, or even not necessarily farming land, but that has been through the generations of just the approach of the yeah. owners through the through the um, the generations. Mm. Uh, so it does require relationship building, rapport building, um, making sure that the credibility piece is there for those for those landowners, uh, and they're all going to have different criteria and uh, motivations. And you're going to need to be prepared to listen to what that is. Yeah, and big scene is like or really mm. that be a pretty big part of it, I imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. And so. How about off-market acquisitions versus on-market? Is there much off-market activity? Uh, th there is. There is a mix. Uh, yeah. So obviously on-market stuff is, is fairly easy to find because, it, because it's on the market and sure. generally a tender process involved, um, obviously very typically an agent involved uh, or agency. Um, off-market property uh, does, uh, does transact regularly. Mm. Um, depending on exactly what you are looking for. Yeah. Obviously, building relationships with uh, local agents and agencies is going to help significantly. Mm. Uh, but also, even if you are going to take a path of, of uh, approaching landowners directly, uh, that's going to be very difficult if you are um, not maintaining a presence locally. Yeah. Um, so there is a, uh, a branding and reputational exercise to be undertaken um, mm. To actually to be able to buy off market, uh, to, to be able to just get in front of owners, yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah, right, okay, interesting. So let's say 
the developers being successful and buying what they wanted to buy. What happens to the housing diversity mix? What is that like? What is the ideal? Is there a rule of thumb of sorts? Uh, there isn't a rule of thumb per se. I think mm. um, diversity, as you've mentioned, is is really, really key. So whether we're talking about a land division, whether we're talking about urban infill and townhousing and apartments, I think uh, diversity is really, really important. Yep. Um, each area is going to have different demand for different types of products. So sometimes you might have a land division full of 600 square metre plots. Um, mm. In other parts of Adelaide, you might basically need to be at 800 square metres or you you know, you know won't sell a single plot. So oh, okay. Um, other areas will dictate that uh, you can actually sell 85 square metre plots with three level townhouses just because that area is able to support that. Sure. Uh, so uh, significantly different drivers in different locations and obviously the high density stuff is going to come in closer to the city and be more urban infill style. Hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, basically just a, a significant and uh, exhaustive exercise in analysing what's selling and what's selling well so that you can make sure it's saleable and make sure the returns um, acceptable. Yeah, exactly. And they fit the feasibility essentially. Absolutely right. But man, I was just curious on how that side of it works because affordability in SA is obviously a lot better than in some of the other states. So you can offer a 600 square meter block of land. And what would that be roughly? In uh, so I think the, um, I mean, the land costs absolutely, as you go further out of Adelaide, you're going to reduce the cost, but the, mm. um, probably the big uh, driver or big benefit in Adelaide is that uh, to be a little bit out of Adelaide is actually 12 to 14 k's out. No. Uh, it's not 25 k's out. So mm. um, you can still for $700,000, dollars uh, get yourself a three or four bedroom home on a, on a decent plot of land that wow. only five or 600 square meters of land. Yeah. Um, and that's because the land cost might be reasonably low in that exercise. Building costs have gone up. Yep. Um, but certainly that is part of the appeal of South Australia. Yeah, interesting. Do those estates a little bit further out offer 300, 350 square meter sort of plots? Uh, so again, it, it'll vary depending on- Wait for the first of them this kind of thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, certainly. So our, our first time at a grant here is $650,000. Oh, um, and uh, yes, so what you'll see is uh, a developer will identify that as a key part of the market. Hmm. Uh, first home buyers are very, very active at the moment in South Australia. We have uh, two key financial incentives on the on the table for them um one is the first time out of grant which is a fifteen thousand uh, dollar free kick really from the government okay um, to be eligible for that the value of uh, the home uh, must be below six hundred and fifty thousand dollars yep. and the home must be brand new right so in the case of a house and land package that would be a total price house plus land yep. um the other uh just as good if not better incentive for the first time owners is, is that uh, again as long as that value stays below six hundred and fifty thousand dollars um, they'll get stamped in completely free. So, oh, wow. um, that is uh, obviously a point really, massive, brilliant motivator. Yeah, a massive uh, incentive to buy. Mm -hmm. um, and again, the product would need to be brand new. So that's um, really it's it's also acting as stimulus for that construction industry. Uh, so that there's more new product coming into market rather than simply a first time owner taking um, an outer suburb existing home. Yeah, sure thing. That, that's brilliant. I mean, look that where all the kind of things that we want to talk about in this series on buying land in South Australia. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Dan. And thanks for watching. Look forward to being with you again. James is going to produce a document uh, with a link below where you can actually see all the key points that he's talked about. Um, and we'll be in touch from there on. Thanks so much.